What's up my producer friends, I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. So in this tutorial we're going to be experimenting with flipping samples and loops using Resynthesis inside Harmer. That may sound a little complicated, but it's really not. We'll, we'll get into it in the tutorial. But the main idea is just that it's another sort of unique way that you can take a sample or a loop and turn it into a completely new unique thing. So we could potentially do this instead of chopping up a sample or maybe we could do this before we chop up the sample, or maybe we could do this afterwards. It's really just another cool technique that hopefully you guys can mess with and come up with some cool stuff. If you're not familiar with Harmer, it is a native FL Studio synth. It comes with the all plugins bundle, but you will have access to it even if you don't have the all plugins bundle. It'll just be in demo mode. And for what we're gonna be doing in today's tutorial, you can probably get around that because when you're using it in demo mode, essentially when you reload a project, it's not gonna let you load up your preset or whatever. But for what we're gonna be using it for, you can potentially just do the resynthesis and then bounce it down into audio and then you can close out a harmer you don't really need to, to load it back up in another project however you know if you are going to be using harmer i would recommend that you purchase it but without further ado let's get straight into it all right so first things first let's go ahead and go up here and we'll add harmer so this is what harmer looks like it is an additive synthesizer now make sure that you do go to a default preset and once you've done that go ahead and go into image and we're gonna basically drag our sample or our loop, whatever, into this section here. So I'm just gonna pick a random loop out of my 10 melody loops for trap and R&B. Uh, this is actually available on my website if you wanna check it out. But we can kind of go through here and take a listen to some of these. And if we have enough time in the tutorial, maybe I'll do a couple of examples of these. And I actually like this loop a little bit. So we'll just, we'll go with this first loop just right off the bat. Now, one thing that you do want to be aware of is how long the loop is. So you can drag it onto the playlist and just get an idea. So this loop is gonna be four bars and it is at 140 BPM. Also make sure whatever tempo your loop is at, set that set your project to that tempo. It's just gonna make it easier while we're working on it. And then potentially we can change that later on if we need to. So we can see this is a four bar loop. I can go ahead and get rid of that. And now I can drag this over directly onto here. And now this is showing us the spectral imaging of this loop. So I could potentially hit different keys. and it's gonna play different notes depending on what key I play. And within this interface here, we can actually get some pretty crazy stuff. So for example, I can play. So just with messing with the speed knob, we're able to get some pretty cool effects. And ultimately that's what we're gonna kind of be messing with in this tutorial mostly. But in order to do that, we're gonna add an LFO onto this. And that way we can mess with it a little bit easier instead of using like an automation clip or something like that. So let's make sure that this speed is set to 0%. Over here on the smoothing, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to zero as well, zero milliseconds. And then sharp over here, I wanna turn this all the way down to 100% transients only. And that should hopefully help us preserve all the transients. We can potentially mess with these knobs later on if we want to. And then lastly, I wanna right click on this time knob and I wanna go down here to where it says type in value. Let's go ahead and click that. And we're gonna put 0 0.5. So we can go ahead and click that. So that's gonna snap that to the middle here. And now you can see this line in the middle. So when I click something, it's playing just that middle area. kind of a metallic sort of robotic sound, which can potentially be kind of cool to experiment with. But the next thing that I wanna do is go into my envelope section and I wanna go up here to where it says volume. Let's go ahead and click that. Go down to image time offset, click that. And then where it says envelope, let's go ahead and go to LFO. Now I wanna go ahead and enable this. I wanna link it to the tempo, do global, and also make sure that this is enabled. This is gonna snap it to the grid and it's just gonna make it easier while we're working with it. So I wanna kinda of zoom out here. And on this line here, I wanna go ahead and right click and drag this out. So this is gonna be one bar. And I wanna, as I, as I drag it out, I wanna kinda of zoom out a little bit. So we got one, two, three. So that's gonna be four bars. So now if I go into my piano roll, I can go to C5 and I can go ahead and place that there. And we can actually take a listen to that. 
So it sounds pretty crazy because the LFO is just going up and down really fast. What I wanna do is go ahead and set the LFO to essentially be the same thing as what we had initially, and then we can tweak it from there. So I'm gonna move the speed down so that it's just essentially one cycle. I'm gonna take the skew and put it all the way to the right. It'll make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And then I can also move this. Um, so this is not really on the grid where I want it to be. So let me see. Okay, so that's the beginning and then, all right, so that should be the length. And by the way, I'm just right clicking and dragging this and this changed the position of the phase of the LFO. So if it's like here, it's gonna start in a different position in terms of where on the sample it actually plays. So that's why we wanna make sure that it's starting down here and going all the way up here. So that's essentially the same as our initial sample. And from here, we can start tweaking it a little bit. So for example, I could take the skew and go this way with it, and then it's basically going to reverse the sample. And again, I can change the phase of this to, put, to start it anywhere I want on the sample. So I think actually, so that's kind of more similar to how it sounds in terms of basically taking the sample and just reversing it, but it sounds pretty much the same. So obviously there are other reverse plugins out there which may or may not give you the same flexibility of being able to change the phase like this, which is pretty handy in terms of knowing exactly where you want your loop or your sample to start playing. So another thing we can do here is we can mess with the speed. Um, so I could speed this up or slow this down and I could do this like this, or, you know, I could potentially do it just by changing the tempo. So we could slow this down. But I'm gonna leave this at 140 for now. Let's try going actually up to 150. And I'm curious if we bring this down. I think I like that a little bit better. We can also mess with the tension, which is going to either speed things up or slow things down. So this is another thing you can mess with to kind of create some weird effects. So I'll illustrate that. Let me kind of mess with this. And it's kind of hard to hear exactly what's going on here, but basically it, you can hear where it slows down, but then it has to speed back up. So it slows down through here and then it, you know, as it, as it opens back up, it has to go faster again. So what I can do here is bring this back to 0% and I can do the same effect by messing with this here. So I can right click to add a new point. And if I lower it down like this, it's going to slow it down. And if I bring it up like this, it's going to speed it up. So, here, I'll do this. So, and then we can slow it down. And then speed, obviously it's speeding back up as it goes up there. So I can get pretty complex with some unique stuff here in terms of like, I don't know here, let, let me just, for example, I'll, I'll bring this down um, and then add another point here and we'll try like this. Here, let me do this the opposite way. So we'll do something like this. Add another point here. So 
So that, that one there is kind of weird. And then I could lengthen this out. So, but again, it's got to come down. If I wanted to not have it come down like that, I'd add that point there. And then if I wanted that to be like, you know, full on out, obviously that sounds way too robotic. robotic. I kind of like the um, having it do like that little stutter step. So like having it kind of like this. And then again, we can try, you know, bringing it up. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, let me try adding this here. Anyway, I don't want to spend forever messing with this, but you get the idea of some, some cool stuff you can do there. So let's go into the effects section and we can potentially add some effects onto it and that'll maybe help it beef up a little bit. So let's add like some soft saturation. A little bit of delay. A little bit of reverb. We could try adding some chorus here. So it kind of spreads it out a little bit. Not sure if I like the chorus on this one uh, particularly. Now we can go back into our image setting. We can mess with some of these other knobs that we've messed with previously. We can mess with these knobs down here. This kind of creates some really interesting stuff. The cool thing about using Harmer for resynthesis is we still have the ability to use any features within the synth to still kind of you know, tweak the sound even further. So for example, this harmonizer here, you can get kind of some cool, unique sounds out of this. So let's mess with that. sure if I necessarily like the harmonizer on this one. You know, we could add a less amount or change the width so it's not quite as high. Could also potentially add a little bit of vibrato on this, so that might be interesting. So another thing we could do is uh, route this to a free mixer track and go ahead and start adding some other effects onto it. Um, for example, we could try gross beat. I'll uh, go to momentary, do a half speed. Now, one cool thing that you can do with gross beat is you can bring it down to about 25% 
and it'll have just a little bit of that low end, but it'll also keep the highs too. So it'll kind of just beef up the sound. Now there's obviously some other stuff you could do within gross beat as well, but let's just leave that there. Uh, you know, you can always add some like cassette or bad tape, something like that. Give it some lo-fi vibes, some retro vibes. All right, and then now we can just basically bounce this out. Um, so let's just bounce it down. Quick render as audio clip. Now make sure when you're rendering as audio clip that you do have it uh, rendered as a WAV file. It'll just be better quality that way. And I can drag this back on. And now we can take this loop and potentially chop it up even more. I actually did a video on how to chop loops in FL Studio using SliceX a while ago. So I'll be sure to have something pop up on the screen now if you guys wanna check out that video. And I'll be sure to leave a link in the description as well. But one thing that I like to do if I'm not using SliceX is I'll just basically chop this up into four segments, seeing as how that's kind of uh, what we did anyway. And then I can kind of pick and choose what I like. So let's go ahead and go to song mode. So let's kind of listen to this. Let's try this one. Yeah, in this case, I don't think that I necessarily want to chop it up. It just feels pretty good the way that it is. But let's go ahead and make a beat out of this just for kicks. 